Oh, welcome guys uh, to this live. I'll be here for 30 minutes. Hopefully everything's working okay. I've got a slightly different tech set up today, so I'm just checking things are going okay. Uh, I have YouTube over here, Instagram over here. I tried to get it work on Facebook. That wasn't working on the Facebook group. Um, but oh my goodness, already loads of questions come through over on Insta. So let's, uh, sorry, on uh, YouTube. So start on those. Hopefully you guys can hear me all okay. So, um, yeah, John's got a couple here. Notice that Chase offering a hundred quid incentive um, paid on opening and money to their new Nutmeg service with the Chase app. Yep, yeah, I'll write about that in the newsletter this week. Uh, any hints on what Nationwide might replace their 5% supermarket cashback offer with when it ends at the end of April? Probably nothing. I think they're doing a short term thing. You never know. They might continue it. They might do a bank switching deal. They might have interest changes. They're just trying something out there, I suppose. If you don't know about this, 5% back on your grocery shopping if you have a nationwide debit card. All the details for that over on the blog. Uh, Algeron says, hello, hello, Algeron. Uh, JM, you're probably aware that the level of customer service is slumped at Curve, even with the paid subscription for black and metal. Any ideas on how best to deal with this issue? So Curve are, um, interestingly, they're one of the ones where uh, they used to be great and now it's not so good, just as generally the proposition, particularly the free proposition. I rarely use it myself now, and I've got like a legacy deal, so I've got access to all these different features, but I just don't really use it. Um, if their customer service isn't great, that's also really good to know. Uh, I guess if you've really got a problem, a proper, proper, proper problem, you know, keep trying, keep trying all the social media things. Uh, you can post the message in the group potentially, and maybe it's something, if I've got time, I can look into more detail, uh, or maybe it's just stop using it. That might be sadly that the option there has less and less benefits going for it. Uh, Grandad Tim Scott says, Hi Andy, thanks for the recent details. Are we the £200 switching? With regard to deposit requirements, how long does the money have to stay in the account before you can move it elsewhere? So this will vary depending on the bank switching deal. Uh, some of them will say the money has to stay in there for a certain amount of time. Some of them won't say anything at all. And if it doesn't say anything at all, if there's nothing in the terms and conditions that say you must have the money in the account for X amount of time, then as soon as the money's in, it can come straight back out again. Maybe leave it a day or so just, you know, but you can potentially, there's, there's nothing to stop you uh, taking that money out. And don't forget, unless it explicitly says, and it never does, that the money has to be in one go, you can put a small amount in, take it out, put it back in, take it out a number of times, how many times you need to, if you're worried about reaching that total limit. Let's jump back to Insta because it whizzes past here with the um, the questions, so they can disappear. Well, let's see what's going on here. I saw something a second ago. Uh, Fulham says, rumours of a Chase credit card coming soon. Yeah, it's uh, when Chase announced last week that they were increasing the cashback, 1% cashback for another year and adding 1% interest to the main current account, not the savings account, which you get via the current account, which pay 3%. So one percent. They also had a list of things that were on the horizon. No timeline at all for this. It could be this year, could be year after. Who knows? But one of those things was uh, a credit card, which you would expect because that's how they're going to make money off all of us. Yeah, they're giving us all this money right now in cash back and um, and interest rates, but they're going to want to make money, and credit cards is one way that they can do that. Uh, Manish says, "Where to save uh, if we have a lump sum of fifty thousand pounds?" So have a look at becleverwithyourcash.com forward slash savings. That is where on a daily basis, I am updating the best savings accounts. Obviously, I'll do a monthly update on the YouTube channel, possibly this weekend, if not early next week, uh, with uh, other day details. But have a look at there and you've got a list there of easy access accounts, notice accounts, fixed accounts. Just in the last few hours, a one year fix is now at 4.31%. That's from Al Ryan Bank which is um, the highest it's been for a long, long time. We've seen them going down, 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 and suddenly a little bit of battle going on. A couple of banks pushing it back up by 4.2, up to 4.31%. So that's interesting to see that going on. So lots of options there. Be clever with your cash.com forward slash savings. Back to uh, oh, Dave says, nice to bump into you at the weekend. I was, a, uh, I was at a football game. I'm a Crystal Palace fan, and I went to Brentford Palace. Uh, and a, a man came up to me, Dave here, and he said, uh, are you and he said yes and he's watching the channel which is never happened to me before if you see me out in the street please do come and say hello it was really lovely to uh meet someone i didn't ask your name i was so shocked that someone recognized me uh but dave lovely to meet you as well show me about the result uh andrew says we've well, got a few things here andrew i'm just going to answer your first one if they're multiple things so we can get everyone else in uh he says hi andy i don't spend enough to make the ba three thousand pound offer worth it would you say it's worth applying for the standard card that gives five thousand bonus points is there a better current Amex offer available? 
So this is the uh, double today, and we might be borderline here because sometimes they often don't end things at midnight, they might end them at six o'clock or whatever. Today's the last day for this British Airways uh, American Express Premium Plus credit card bonus offer, which was 70,000 Avios points if you spend uh, 3,000 pounds in three months. To get that boosted offer of that size, you had to join the free British Airways Executive Club. It's basically their loyalty scheme where your Avios points live and apply it via a link within that site to guarantee that you actually get the 70,000 rather than the 35,000, which is on offer on the Amex site. That in itself is boosted from the normal 25,000. You might have time. So have a look. If you're interested in that, have a look. Uh, all the details over on BeCleverYourCash.com and there's a video on YouTube channel as well. Uh, that's a great deal. That's an amazing deal. The other deal is the British Airways American Express card, the free card. Uh, that's boosted via that same link to, I want to say 10,000 points, which is pretty decent for that. However, if it's your first American Express card, then have a look at other options. Go to, again, I've got a whole video on the YouTube channel, whole article on the blog, taking you through the best American Express cards, but also not just the best ones that pay the most or have the lowest fees or the extra perks, the order that I would do them in order to generate continuous welcome bonuses. But also the factors are that like Andrew's saying there about a minimum spend, not spending three grand in three months. There are some with lower ones, which you might want to go for, first of all, before you go on to a BA card. Adam says, hi Andy, do you think Chase will bring Amazon credit cards uh, seeing as they have partners in the US and Amazon has stopped with New Day. So Amazon uh, have said on their website for a long time now, since the uh, New Day card stopped working last autumn, that they are working on a new card. I thought they'd have it ready for Black Friday because that's a big spending moment for Amazon customers. They didn't. It still says, we'll let you know. Uh, I don't know anything about it any more than you guys about who that might be with. I would be surprised if it's Chase's first credit card in the UK is with Amazon. Maybe later on, but I would be surprised, but hey, you never know. You never know at all. As soon as I know anything, as soon as Amazon do launch something, I will tell you about it. If it's good enough, a proposition for its own video and review, then I'll do those. If it's a bit meh, I'll just include it in my monthly credit card update. So uh, keep an eye on all of those if you wanna find out what's going on. Uh, Tyler says, hi Andy, I got my Amex Nectar credit card in early jam, but the credit reference agencies don't seem to be picking it up. Any idea why? Also, any guesses of which bank will announce a switch offer next? So, with credit reference agencies, there are three of them, I'm sure you know, Tyler, but if you guys don't know, there is Experian, there's Equifax, and there's TransUnion. And you can pay with Equifax and uh, Experian to access your credit report directly with them and see all the stuff relatively fast. Uh, TransUnion, it's free anyway via Credit Karma. However, a lot of people, myself included, we check our credit reports by third parties. So, Money Saving Experts Credit Club for Experian and ClearScore for Equifax. There are other ones out there. They sometimes can have a bit of a delay. They will update every single month. So it could well be that it's just taking time for it to, to come through. Or it could be potentially that you're looking at one report and it's appearing on a different one. Although with Amex, I'm pretty confident they report to all three. So keep an eye on it. You've got the card. You had a hard credit search to get it. It will appear at some point. But it just sort of shows you sometimes there can be a bit of a delay for these things. Uh, coming through to your reports if you're not going direct and there's no reason to go direct unless maybe there's something uh, if you had some sort of fraud has happened so you want to keep an eye on things as they come through live let's jump back over to insta hello guys uh nayef says what's the group to join forum yeah great so if you guys don't know about it, so if you're on youtube you can see it one of the urls one of the links i've got at the top the facebook group be clever with your cash.com forward slash community is the short url that would take you to facebook you can join the group there. There's about three and a half thousand people there right now. And if I don't get through to your questions today, and sadly, we never can get through all of them, uh, then that is a great place for you to join and ask a question. I'll try and answer them there if I can, but there are a lot of them coming through. But all, if there's some really, really fantastic people, very active people in that community who are always happy to share their thoughts as well. I try and keep an eye on all the different comments as well. But if anything is wrong, obviously I'll jump in. But if someone's giving you the right information, the same information that I would give you, then that's fantastic. I'll, I'll let them just issue that. Uh, they may also be directing you to the blog, becleveryourcash.com itself, because a lot of the time people ask questions about a bank switching deal, about a savings account, whatever it might be. And those answers are all on the site itself. So uh, you can, might be able to find that you can just go there, find the information yourself. If not, ask a question in the group or here, how are we doing? 20, 10 minutes gone, 20 to go. Let's race through so you can do a few more if we can. We definitely can. We can get through loads more. I'm a bit croaky. Sorry if you can hear that. I've had a bit of a, a cold. Um, 
Medson Moongate says, Hi Andy, with bank switching offers, is it okay to deposit the qualifying amount of money into the new account before the switch has happened or should you wait until afterwards? So again, it depends on the terms of the deal. Broadly, it shouldn't make a difference, uh, but if it doesn't explicitly say one way or another, then uh, well, it doesn't matter, does it? If it explicitly says put it in before the switch or after the switch, then do that. Because then it's about you opening the account. So if it's a brand new account. Now, actually, good point here. If it's an existing account, and some of the offers like the NatWest one will allow you to switch into a, uh, an existing account, then I would wait. I would put the money in. In fact, the NatWest one explicitly says you've got 60 days to add in £1,250 and check your online banking. If you're a new customer, that's from when you open the account. If you're an existing customer, that's from when the switch completes. Okay, so that is an important distinction there. And I didn't actually go back to what Tyler said a minute ago, which bank will announce a switch offer next. Uh, when the Lloyds one finishes in a couple of weeks, Halifax, I'm confident, well, Halifax will offer one then. And we haven't seen one from HSBC for a long time. So I wouldn't be surprised if they come back in. As for the others, who knows whether Nationwide will come back? Who knows whether Virgin Money will come back? Who knows whether Santander will come back? Because their offer was gone in a, in a flash. Um, but obviously, I'll let you know as soon as I know. Okay, Andrew said the volume is quite low. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, I can't necessarily get this much closer. Let's see if that makes a difference. Hopefully, that's going to be a little bit better for you. Um, <clears throat> Justina says, Hi, Andy. I need to switch to RBS and a dummy account. Whole article on the blog taking you through dummy accounts and a video on YouTube about the same thing. So watch that, read that. That'll give you all the information that you need. Uh, Abdallah, long time. I uh, hope you're well. Good to see you again, mate. Thanks for joining me again. Uh, Granddad Tim Scott, uh, I haven't done that one. Add 1989. Hi, Andy. If you go over your PSA, this is your personal savings allowance, do you have to manually inform someone and pay the tax or will it just happen automatically? What if you have accounts at separate banks? So broadly, what happens is when you have um, uh, your interest paid, uh, that is reported by the banks to the, uh, um, what they called? HMRC. And that will be deducted. If you've gone over your PSA, it will be deducted off your tax code the following financial year. However, if you fill in a self-assessment form, which you might do for a number of reasons, then you will declare it there and it will be taken into, um, into consideration on the total amount of tax that you pay. So one way or another, you're going to be sorted. Um, depends really if you have a self-assessment form or not. Uh, BFIKINUK. Uh, is there much to be gained in salary sacrifice to a pension scheme if salary is under 40K? Afraid pensions aren't one of my expertise here, so I would uh, look into it a bit more, do some research. One thing is worth potentially uh, looking at with pensions uh, is uh, to get some financial advice, although not much money, that feels like a bit of overkill for you right there. Yeah, I'm sorry, we have to do a bit more research on that one. Sorry, I can't help on that. Uh, Michael says, I tried signing up today for a money's account, but your Clever Cash invite code was not accepted. Any idea why didn't it proceed any further? Okay, I'll have a look at that. Um, see what's going on there. Uh, it's one of those accounts that they're not, I wouldn't bother with a money's account. Like, yes, there are deals to get a, a welcome 10, 20 quid sometime, time to time. They used to do 20% off gift cards. They haven't done that this year. Yeah, I personally wouldn't prioritise it. And you can't use it for switching because it's not a fully regulated bank here in the UK. So I'll look into that, but I wouldn't get too excited. Uh, Sherry says, Hi Andy, the new Chase update and money transfer. How long does... Right, okay. So Sherry's saying, there's a new... Again, there's a whole video on the new Chase uh, cashback rules, how they're going to work from March onwards. Very, very simply, if you're an existing customer whose cashback comes to an end at the end of February. You'll start this straight away at the uh, beginning of March. If you're already in your first year, it will start after that. But fundamentally, to earn cashback going forwards, you have to pay £500 into your account every single month in the preceding month. So your own cashback is normal in March. But if you want to earn it in April, you've got to pay it in in March. And then if you want to earn it in May, you've got to pay it in in April. Now, what you're saying, does it need to stay in the account? No, it doesn't. And a few people have asked me this. I'm like, well, if you want to earn cash back from Chase and you're putting £500 in there, why would you want to take the money out? Because you'll need the money in Chase to earn the cash back. And it's only 500 quid. 
So appreciate maybe if you're budgeting on a really tight, you're really controlling where your money is going, you might not want to. It doesn't have to stay there, but you're going to need it in there to spend it. Hope that makes sense. Again, whole video and article, more details about that. And I spoke about it in the podcast today as well. Uh, Alison says, hi, Andy. I've spent enough of my BA premium plus bonus and is and it's there on the credit card. Do I need to, to wait until the statement date and points are in my BA account to downgrade it? Uh, for the fee refund um, no so you don't have to um, you might want to I've seen lots of people saying they've done it and it's been absolutely fine uh, down to the free card because you've got the points you've earned them they're not going to take them away from you you are still it's the same it's not like other cards where maybe you are um, closing a card and opening a new one uh, which you might do with the Amex Platinum or the Amex Gold cards when you want a membership reward card to keep points alive. Your, it's the same card as being downgraded. In fact, your card will keep working until the new one arrives in the post. Um, so I wouldn't worry about that too much. Um, but if you are slightly concerned about it, I mean, it's going to be a couple of weeks probably. That's not going to be too much in, in the scheme of things. It might be worth hanging around for that. Uh, Billy Bob Khan says, Hi Andy, I've switched to NatWest and made two £500 payments and one £250 payment and took it out immediately, but £1,250 has been transferred into the account. Am I okay? Yes, I am. Mini Mad says, Evening. Hello, Mini Mad. Let's go back to Insta. Uh, evening, guys. Everyone said hello. That's lovely to see you. Sonic Boom says, um, Hey Andy, what car do you think is best for buying plane tickets? Do I have a view? So, uh, you Oh, there's something called Section 75 of the Consumer Credit Act, and this is basically a law that uh, if you buy something with a credit card that costs more than £100, uh, then your purchase is protected if something was to go wrong. So it makes sense to, for anything that costs more, more than £100 to use a credit card. However, it gets slightly complicated with flights. Let's say you're buying from BA, directly from British Airways. Brilliant. Do that, okay? But let's say you're doing it via um, Expedia or another travel agent. Then it becomes a grey area and that direct connection that the law requires between you and the retailer is broke, you and the business are broken by this intermediary. So then it's hard to say whether that protection is going to make is work or not. Still worth giving it a go, but it kind of like does make things a little bit harder. Um, also, I said about something costing £100 or more. That can also be complicated. It's great, isn't it? These laws protect us, but they get all over the place. Uh, that also gets slightly complicated when you look at returns. So is a return flight, let's say a uh, return flight is 120 quid. Yeah, so that's covered, right? But what if it's two flights of 60 quid? Have you actually spent 100 quid on the flights to get this protection or have you spent 60 quid twice? Again, it's a relatively gray area. However, I would err in favor of those things just in case to get those extra protections if I can. And obviously you wanna earn some kind of cash back or some kind of reward as a result of that. Uh, again, got videos taking you through the highest paying cash back credit cards, or you could consider stoozing where you get a 0% credit card, 0% purchase credit card, and the money you would have spent, you put into savings instead at a higher rate. And that might actually give you a higher return. Lots of issues though that could potentially impact that. Again, a whole video about stoozing and a whole article about stoozing over on the blog as well. So I hope that helps you, Sonic Boom. Um, Fran Sesco says, what's the best travel card? Is Fair FX a good option? Got a whole video and I'm gonna keep saying this because it makes it quicker for us to get through as many questions as we can. Whole video and an article looking at the best cards to use when spending overseas. Spoiler, Chase, 1% fee free to spend overseas. But also, if you want a credit card, then Barclay Card Rewards, much, much lower rate of cashback, 0.25%. But sometimes you need a credit card when you're overseas for things like car hire or hotel um, inc incidentals and things like that. Uh, now, there is a, not, I've gone into detail on this, but there is another level of this where you're looking at locking in on a rate and you're buying that currency. And Revolut is not a bad option there. Now, I don't know fair FX, um, but for most people, they're not going to need that. Chase, Stalin. Barclay card rewards, all details over on the blog. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba, Justina, we've done one for you, Justina. I'm trying to do different people. Uh, ask it again. If I come back to it later on, I will. Uh, Licorice Tuna, I've recently received an inheritance of £30,000. I would like to invest in property. However, 
I would like to put it somewhere before I do this that is easy access. What would be your recommendations? So uh, yeah, I think you're right. If you're not sure when you're going to access the cache, then you don't want to lock it away. Um, if it's your first property, I would recommend a lifetime ISA, although that depends where you live. There are restrictions that come into play with that that you have to be aware of. Again, there's a video on the YouTube channel explaining how lifetime ISAs work. Um, but if that's not going to work for you because you're over 40 or you've already got a property uh, and you are looking to not lock it away, you could consider a notice account and they will pay a higher rate than the uh, easy access accounts right now, or even the limited access accounts, marginally more, but you've got to give 90 days notice or 120 days notice. If you're buying a house, you're going to have that amount of time available to you. So it might be worth considering one of those accounts. Now they are also listed, the best paying ones of those are listed at becleverwithyourcash.com forward slash savings. So if you've got a place, what's the best account for this, the best account for that, highest paying ones, that is where you will find the answers. Uh, Sammy Amjaf says, Hello Andy, big fan mate. Uh, thank you, very kind of you. I already have an HSBC account that I opened in October 22. Does that mean I can't switch one of my accounts to First Direct? Yeah, sadly it does, it rules you out. So off the top of my head, I think the date is January the 1st, 2020. Again, I've got an article on the blog with more information about the First Direct offer, so check that one out. But uh, this is a rules you out. If you've had an account since then, in that date, uh, then you won't get the first direct one. And the reason this is because uh, first direct is part of HSBC. They are the same bank in lots of ways. Uh, they do things a little bit differently and maybe they're a little bit more fleet of foot and obviously there are no branches, um, but that is why they are tied together. And it works the other way around as well. So HSBC, if they bring an offer back, if you've got a first direct account, uh, depending on the date, you might not be able to, to get it. Uh, Esme says, for the TSB switch, Hopefully they're my direct debit that has been set up but not be taken account towards the reward. Uh, it pro Hopefully, probably, I always err on the side of caution that if they want an active direct debit, I like that money to have come out of the account, the old account, before the switch um, happens. Uh, so I've actually just set up, because I'm gonna do the TSB switch, it didn't work for me last year for whatever reason. So I've just set up uh, a couple of uh, quick, simple direct debits in, what am I switching from? A Lloyd's account that I've never used. Um, switching from that, hopefully it's TSB, I've just set up a couple of quick, fast direct debits, Plum and Moneybox, which I'd previously used on a switch ages ago. Took me a bit of time, had to set up a new account uh, on Moneybox, get them, took a few days for them to do that, it's a bit slower than the first time I did it. Um, but again, that's quite an easy one. So you could always try that one. You can get them set up within a week if you've got time before your TSB switch goes through. Uh, Raja Hasaleem says, cashback, the Chase debit card or the Starling 123? credit card interesting so uh i think you mean the santander 123 credit card uh the santander 123 credit card is not available to new customers i had one donkeys ago um and then i stopped using it and closed it down because it wasn't worth it because it was a fee that was associated with it and although it had good cashback rates over here it had nothing over there so uh, i can't remember off the top of my head what those rates are i did chat to my mate about this the other day because he had one uh, but i personally would be looking probably at the Chase debit card for most of my spending, um, unless you've got an Amex with a welcome bonus, in which case that's gonna generate you much, much more. But again, just simply compare the rates. What are you getting? Where can you use it? Are there restrictions here or there? Uh, Ricky B says, hi, currently going through a bank switch. Do I have to wait for the switch to complete before doing the conditions of the switch, or can I do it once a new bank account is open? Had a similar question earlier. It will depend on the bank offer. See what it says, and just make sure you follow the conditions. It's all there on their websites, and I've got analysis on my site as well of all the different offers. But again, always, doesn't matter if it's me telling you, or you read it on social media, or paper, or whatever it might be, or an advert pops up, always read the terms and conditions of these things, because they may well change after a video is recorded, or an article is written, or whatever it might be, or there might be an extra thing that is pretty generic, but applies to your situation. Always guys read those terms and conditions. I know they can be boring. The bank switching ones are generally pretty tiny, won't take you long to check them. Just make sure you understand it uh, before you do anything. Five minutes left, oh goodness, okay. <laughs> Mush, is, is this a good time to buy a house? I'm afraid I don't know. If I knew, uh, if anyone knew, then that would be amazing, wouldn't it? Sadly, um, not everyone does. Um, Judy says, Andy, for switching, are Lloyds and TSB linked anymore? No, they're not. Uh, so they, there's not gonna be any issues there. Uh, also, I've been refused by the co-op. Would I be like to be accepted this time when a referral comes in? 
it's hard to say every time you apply for these current accounts because I talk about how easy it is to open these accounts, these dummy accounts, these new accounts, do these switches. But obviously, you have to apply. They will check in vast majority of occasions. Check your credit reports. If there's anything in the credit report that's not good, that could impact your chance of getting accepted for the account. But you're also going to be putting other bits of information in your application. So there's never a guarantee that you'll get accepted. Uh, fingers crossed, you will. But if you got accepted, rejected by co-op, why is that? Why did they reject you? Was there a mistake? Were there any inconsistencies between what you put on the form and what's on your credit report? There are, yeah. Sadly, I can't tell you exactly if you'll get accepted before or after. There's no eligibility search for current accounts, really. Um, but you, all you can do is give it a go. What I would say is, uh, just if, as long as you don't have any major credit applications, I say this all the time. There's nothing like a remortgage coming up, balance transfer, credit card that you essentially need at some point in the near future. They should be your priority. If there's nothing like that coming along, then applying. If you do get rejected then the damage hopefully will be short-lived because there's nothing else you need to apply for. You can wait for your score to recover and a few months later down the line, you can try for something again. Um, Mini Mad, one question. Having savings accounts with funds in, would you also suggest to have an emergency fund in the same bank so if you case your other saving account runs into access issues? So, in an ideal world, you would have your money in savings across a couple of different accounts spread them out because although it doesn't happen very often sometimes we know there are issues with apps right or online banking or whatever it might be um so if you have your money spread around if one thing goes wrong then you can access it elsewhere so whether it is uh, an emergency fund or a fixed account or whatever it might be i think it makes sense to spread them out however the flip side of that is it can get a bit more complicated and not everyone is comfortable having numerous accounts, particularly if you're also getting numerous accounts for bank switching and bank rewards and savings accounts over here. So you might want to make things as easy as possible. And the risk of having, you know, spreading out loads of accounts, I think the risk of actually needing to do that is quite low. Just maybe have some money in a separate account and ideally that separate account is earning you the best possible rate that it can. Uh, KD says, I switched to a Santander account to uh, avail the bonus. They sent me a debit card, login, and all necessary PIN. Uh, but then, uh, da, 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 then they closed my account with no bonus. Yeah, I've seen a few people talk about this recently with uh, accounts being closed. It'd be interesting to know if this is people who are doing uh, a huge number of um, applications in a short amount of time and they're seeing this. Uh, and why they pick it up later, I don't know. Or you've got multiple accounts with the bank, I don't know. Uh, there's no guarantee they will tell you what's been going on, but maybe give them a you know a call or email and say, can you please explain what's going on and see if you can get a, an answer there. Right, guys, we're nearly out of time. Um, like I said at the beginning, or about halfway through, I think it was, if I haven't got around to your question, I'll do a couple more, but do join the Facebook group, becleveryourcash.com forward slash community. Join there, ask the question, and uh, once I've approved the question, I try. I do try and approve every question to avoid any scammers and spammers. Um, or go to the website, becleveryourcash.com. Sign up for the newsletter, that comes out every Thursday. That also has a lot of information, so you can keep up to date of stuff when it comes out. Uh, and you can find that information over on the website as well. Let's do a couple more. Uh, Q45, uh, I like how Chip is keeping the interest rate game alive with a 3.15 interest rate rise today. Yep, so they've gone, they put it up, we'll see what happens. Other people might uh, respond to that, bring things up. Um, Keith says, hi Andy, you have the BA Amex Premium Plus card, went to cancel it, was told, right, interesting one. I was told I need to use the card to buy the flight to redeem the companion voucher, so I didn't cancel. Can I downgrade to the Amex, BA Amex credit card to use the voucher but avoid the card fee? So. Yeah, I, if you've got the Premium Plus, there is, for my opinion, there's no point cancelling it. I would always downgrade to the free card because the free card doesn't cost you anything. And then you've got an extra Amex card available to you for other bonuses that come along like Shop Small or other in, -app, or in um, account app offers which are worth taking advantage of. However, interestingly, the, uh, the say you must use the BA Amex card to book your flights. You don't have to. You just need an American Express card. Uh, officially uh, you have to but I've seen lots of instances where people have used any other card for that in fact I've just booked a flight using my companion voucher which I earned on my BA Amex card but I've paid for it using my wife's BA American Express Premium Plus card which we got to get this new bonus 
So it's not even an Amex in my name. I've just paid with an Amex. So you'll be absolutely fine there. I have to call it a day, guys. So sorry. This goes so fast. If I didn't get through to it, say head to those places I mentioned. Oh, wow. Loads of questions didn't get around to this time. Uh, thank you so much, guys. I'll see you in a couple of weeks for another one of these. If not, over in the community, the Facebook group. All right, guys. Thanks so much. Bye.